Good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, my name is Jenny Nevoso. I am the Executive Director of the Italy America Chamber of Commerce West, the official Italian uh, Chamber of Commerce for the Western United States, located here in Los Angeles. For those who don't know me, um, thank you so much for joining our uh, online edition of the Authentic Italian Table today. Um, this event falls within the True Italian Taste campaign. Uh, funded by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, coordinated by Asso Camerestero and created by the Chamber. Uh, today's event um, has been graciously made possible by the support of our member, Lavazza USA, uh, represented here today by, I'm sure he's somewhere over here, uh, Mr. Andre Fucci. Just know that we appreciate you. Uh, the Authentic Italian Table honors Italy culinary heritage through the stories and recipes and the hard work of one of the most talented chefs we have out there in the world, but particularly in Italy today. Chef Enrico Bartolini is here with us. Um, I uh, just, uh, I think I'm just about done. I wanted to introduce you our moderator, uh, food and wine educator, master taste, master taster, um, author and public speaker, Jamario Villa, who will be facilitating today's uh, conversation. Jamario, the Microsoft. Good morning, the, everybody. The microphone is yours. The microphone is mine. The Microsoft. I, <laughs> good morning. I'm very happy because I see some familiar faces. And uh, we just had a, a, an amazing first segment with the media and journalist and chef Enrico Barturini and a few guests from Chicago, Seattle. And uh, it was very exciting. As exciting is to talk with people that actually took part to the event. I would like to introduce one more guest here that we didn't mention yet, Chef Steve Sampson from Rosso Blue Restaurant. Uh, Steve, we're gonna unmute you so you're gonna be able to yeah. interact with us from the beginning. And uh, by the way, we're gonna um, give the chance to ask questions in the chat room to everybody. Make sure the name in your profile correspond to your actual name. I see some of codes or, or nicknames so we can actually call your name and ask the question to the chef or our guest. Um, chef Enrico Bartolini, normally uh, um, resident and connected from Milan, the Mudeck Museum and Restaurant Three Star Michelin, today is actually talking to us from Bergamo Alta, a beautiful uh, town, village uh, in Lombardy, northern Lombardy, from his Michelin star casual restaurant. We have uh, owner and winemaker Alessandro Rotolo of Schioppetto Winery and Volpe Pasini, I want to mention, because these are two iconic wineries in the Italian scene and also a good friend. Uh, and like I said, Chef Steve Sampson from Rosso Blue downtown Los Angeles, which was a terrific technical uh, support, food outsourcer ingredient, box preparer, like he did it all. And, and thank you so much, uh, Chef. I know you have a very important meeting coming up. so. Actually, I'm going to um, call your name before Alessandro, so I give you the chance to uh, talk a little bit, bit together. Um, now, uh, we talked before about sustainability, PDO product, authentic Italian cuisine, true Italian taste. We're not going to talk about this in a technical way, but we will still mention the concept of cooking with using protected by law ingredients. And uh, even if I have full respect from to Italian American cuisine, since my daughter was born in America, we're talking about true Italian cuisine, authentic Italian cuisine, who starts, of course, from the chef, but also from the ingredients. So, um, chef, first of all, uh, welcome. Uh, we received two recipes at home. Can you please tell me um, how everything started? Why did you pick those two recipes? If they belong to the regular menu, and if you can share some information uh, with us. Thank you, Jean Mario, for your warm welcome and thank everybody for being here today. I'm very honored to be connected with you. And next time we will do this probably alive. <laughs> These two recipes I, are a part of my memory because uh, when I opened my first restaurant, I started to prepare risotto with beetroot and gorgonzola cheese. He represented the area where I work. It was in Oltre Popavese. It's in south uh, of Lombardy. It's a beautiful place, completely mm -hmm. uh, inside the vineyard uh, terroir. And these three ingredients represent perfectly the terroir where I was. I were. <clears throat> and uh, once a journalist arrived, he, he tasted uh, 10 different dishes and uh, they sounded 
later, he wrote a very beautiful article speaking only about this risotto. I asked it to him, this risotto was the most simple dishes you try, but he said to me it, it was beautiful because only three simple ingredients together uh, explain it to me your creativity and uh, the place where uh, you are. So I started to be more concrete on the recipes because uh, uh, trying uh, the, the best way to explain who we are in the place where we are, I think is uh, the best message for say the guest, please come visit to me. And then this risotto uh, stay on our menu for from there in 2005. Uh, so this year is uh, 15 years we are preparing in the restaurants. But three years ago, with my team, I discuss uh, about uh, this recipe because it became too much simple. And we remove from the menu for only one month, uh, waiting to find a new solutions for uh, give to him an evolution of the recipe. And uh, we, we found uh, a, a good results adding the nuts in the, around the risotto and uh, an essence of nuts on top. But I didn't propose you this uh, complication on the recipe. <laughs> the three ingredients original are proposed to you and uh, I'm very honored to receive uh, all the pics from you. The second recipe was uh, a simple tempura. Tempura is obviously not Italian, but uh, fried chicken or vegetables is very uh, traditional for me because uh, during the year, the, in the family in Tuscany, we love uh, from the vegetables or uh, meat uh, give to us uh, the, the flavor and the textures of the crispness of the fried. When I was very young, my family fried with uh, olive oil, but uh, the flavor was really strong, too much. So I, when I start to work in the kitchen, I, I look at for also the elegance of the preparations and I started to use uh, seeds oil. Uh, and uh, one detail I love when I fried ingredients is uh, have esteemed uh, preparation inside the, the box. The box is the tempura made with amides and inside the ingredients need to be steamed from his uh, humidity. And I love this preparation, but especially it was a, a technical uh, uh, news for me when I started to work in the kitchen because uh, blending three different uh, amides together can give us uh, a very simple and elementary results, but uh, it's a, a good beginning for a complicated recipe and obtain uh, new textures. Another thing I love uh, is the ketchup of tomatoes and uh, you prepare the, the dolce forte. It's a very similar recipes, but I think in this uh, occasion, it was a very nice share that is simple to cook tomatoes, acidity, and fruits, and obtain a good sauce who can uh, be very well paired with the tempura. I have to say the dolce forte is one of those things I will carry on my food experience for sure. I really appreciate the recipe and, and the risotto in particular. I want to also welcome Paul Feinstein, Patricia Doherty and Krista Simmons as journalists in this consumer segment. Uh, thank you for being with us. I have a question for two chefs, uh, so we can talk with uh, Chef Enrico and then Chef Steve right after. First of all, um, Chef Enrico, you are... Um, the, the probably the, the only chef that received that once four star in the Michelin Guide history. Uh, and uh, I want to know about, you know, how hard it is to get there and how harder it would be to stick at the top and what's next. But I want to go backwards. And I would like to know from both of you, chef, actually, uh, your childhood, who influenced you? Why did you become a chef? Because these days everything is on TV. A lot of kids are looking at the TV and the chef as a star career, rock star and so forth. Like it's a, it's a, lot, of, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of uh, failure and it's a lot of also love and passion. So how everything started for you, chef, and then also Chef Steve? 
Well, for me, at the beginning, I wanted to be a shoemaker because my family was a shoemakers. But uh, the market in '93 wasn't very beautiful. When I decide uh, what kind of school I, I can inscribe to me, I decide the hotelry. My family wasn't very happy. And the first thing they said to me was, uh, remember, you will work uh, in Sunday too. <laughs> but uh, I didn't care because uh, my passion was in the kitchen. And especially I didn't know uh, what the kitchen was and especially what kitchen can uh, become in the years uh, who are arriving. Because when I started to play in the kitchen, my opinion about chefs was uh, people who love to stay there and work uh, a lot. Uh, now the restaurant and gastronomy became a culture, television, media, but uh, in, before the 2000s, uh, the culture around the gastronomic wasn't the same than now. So I, th I can say the, the passion was really true. I, and uh, my dream was uh, at the beginning prepare a beautiful maltagliati with fresh pasta and mushroom. That was my best ambitious. Then when I discovered the fine dining restaurants, I become really loved. And uh, I start to learn from great chef who teach me a lot and also many friends uh, who I have uh, around me uh, gave me every time uh, feedback uh, about uh, what I'm doing and um, I, I follow with uh, every time people who are really uh, full of sensibility and who know the market and then I discover after the four stars together that uh, we are probably specialized in small restaurants who look at for uh, a good message from uh, the culture of the gastronomy. I'm not really passionate to big volume and I think uh, I'm not specialized for the dish, but uh, in our sides and in our place, I, I love to play with the, the ingredients we have uh, in our territory. It's not a limit because we are full of richness around us and uh, a message who I love is uh, give to the guest a, a possibility to visit us and dream to visit us because in, in our place we have something of original. Probably not the best, but uh, it will be original. Before we move to the chef Steve, uh, I, I know Chef uh, Enrico, there is always a grandmother or, or a yeah. family figure in your life that somehow instigate you or push you to, to, to cooking. So who was in your, in your case? Well, the aunt of my father uh, was uh, my babysitter too. And I spent uh, a lot of time with her. And from the age of two years, I walk uh, on the fields with her and she has chicken at home and uh, it was a very country situation and she loved to cook. And uh, I learned from her the, the, the very traditional recipes from Tuscany and, uh, yeah, and the generosity too of the table because uh, she prepared the foods every Sunday for uh, probably 15 people, but we was only three at the table. <laughs> And there were not uh, any wasted food because uh, we ate a lot and uh, what we didn't eat stay in the fridge for one or two days. And uh, it was a very great situation, but especially the passion she has for uh, ingredients. Yeah. The best carrots I can remember arrived from her hands. You know, Chef, you say something very important to me. We were talking about food waste right before with some journalists and Recycle by City. Um, everything was extremely important and technical, but I would say everything starts from the culture. You need to commit to what you cook. You need to plan what you need and eat what you cook. My mother taught me to be a great critic as long as I was cooking. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's something to keep today, in mind. Today, everybody, in Italy, for example, I have a discussion about salads because everybody has got a bag, plastic bag with uh, washed salads. 
is I, I need I know it's very comfortable uh, to open a bag and uh, eat uh, salad in two minutes. But twenty years ago, we need to have the salads with the escargot inside, with the, and we need to wash very well before to use the crispness, the texture of that salad. It was more special than the regular salad we have on the market today. For so sure. we need to decide what we want to eat and uh, have a, a great discipline because the market is really conditioned by our ideas and what we buy. Thank you, Chef. I would like now to know from Chef Steve. Actually, I think I know the story, but what is your story about becoming a chef and uh, the beautiful town of Bologna in your heart? Yeah. yeah um... First, I'd like to uh, say it was a real honor to help with this project and to help uh, hopefully translate Chef Bartolini's dishes to uh, American cooks. I hope everything worked out well with that. So it was, it was a lot of pressure, but, but it, it was an honor to, to work, even though it was from 8,000 miles away with Chef Bartolini. Um, <clears throat> yeah, my mom uh, and dad, my dad studied at, at the University of Bologna and met my mom. They were married there. And so my uh, whole life, I'd go, in the summers, I'd go to Bologna. I grew up in L.A., but I'd spend my summers with my grandparents in Bologna. So I have a whole set of friends over there that I, um, I kind of grew up with. And my mom uh, was born, and my grandfather, they were born in a little house up in the mountains between uh, Bologna and Florence, near, near Pistoia, but on the, on the Emilia-Romagna side. So we'd still go up to that house during the summer, and my nona would cook polenta over the open fire and my no-no would, would grill pork chops on, on the grill on the grill against the wall outside and he'd grow his own arugula and it was just really really special and it really those food memories are something that were very important to me my whole life uh, but I didn't really get into cooking until uh, after college and I was actually thinking about becoming a doctor uh, my dad and my brother are both doctors but then I don't know the food world has called me and I, I, I ended up my sec second I set foot in a professional kitchen, I found my passion. And I think that's uh, Chef Bartolini mentioned. It's, it's very important to whatever you do to hopefully be able to find a passion. Not everyone can do it, unfortunately. Luckily, I didn't have a family yet or anything. I, did, I wasn't tied down by those constraints. So, so I, I was fortunate enough to, to get to, you know, in, in the late 90s to start cooking and, and been doing it now for 20 years. And 20 plus years and it took me a while to realize that the kind of food I wanted to cook was just really the, the food I grew up eating. So I tried to stick to very traditional food from Emilia Romagna, Bologna at the restaurant. We have a wood burning hearth and it's just like, takes me back to the, those meals I had with my grandparents. And growing up, my mom was a great cook too. She loved to cook. All my friends used to love to come over to my house for, for meals. <laughs> We need to have familiar figures around to teach us what, you know, the passion and love. I want to give a very quick story. Uh, I work with the Consortium Food and Wine Consortium from Italy. And a few years ago, the Consortium Lambrusco and Sangiovese were in town and they want to pick a restaurant and then they pick Rosso Blue. They were nostalgic after two days of Italian food and they were all from Emilia Romagna, like you guys. It's a terrific restaurant, but you know, you know, it's, we are in Los Angeles. They went, oh, no, we want to try. They left the restaurant with a huge smile. We left the restaurant with a huge smile. And that was, I think, one of the best compliments. I'm not sure I told you before, but one of the best compliments for your, you know, cuisine, because yeah. it's very hard to make happy some Emilia Romagnoli uh, fellows. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Chefs, I have a question for both of you, and then we go to Alessandro. And in the meanwhile, if you want to drop some questions in the chat room, our... Um, Zoom manager will, will give us a, a sequence of, of questions. Um, speaking about uh, protected by low products, so uh, we have a top 10 that makes 5 billions every year, mostly cheese and salumi, grana padano, parmigiano reggiano, gorgonzola, prosciutto di parma, and so forth. What PDO products are close to your heart and sort of define your style? And, and uh, also, why? What kind of flavor are you looking for? Or what kind of memories are you trying to recollect for your guests and yourself? Uh, Chef Bartolini first, please. Well, before I, in this kind of ingredients, I can find the history, traditions, and constancy, especially regulated by a, a strong discipline, 
to give us uh, the best certification that uh, we, we can have. It's important the quality of the ingredients from the wild market, we can find uh, beautiful experiences, but uh, probably only for once. And the constancy we can have, especially in the commercial uh, market, we need to, to have a certification to represent uh, an history and give a discipline to the producer and also to the consumers. I love a lot in my menu using uh, ingredients who represent uh, our country and the place where we are. There are uh, some many, the most important, more international, like uh, traditional balsamic vinegar, aceto balsamico tradizionale, and parmigiano reggiano or uh, grana padano. And I don't like to translate in many countries that I visit, parmigiano reggiano is named uh, parmesan. I think uh, my name uh, is international everywhere, I, my name is Enrico in every country. Nobody will translate my name in Eric. Good Depends point. where I am. It's important to respect this uh, name because it represents uh, a very great history of uh, family, uh, persons, and a big enterprise who can uh, give uh, this uh, beautiful uh, dream in, around the world. And then in the world of uh, extra virgin of olive oil, especially in the different uh, town where we are, because uh, there are main place where uh, it is produced, but very different between them. I'm from Tuscany and I love a lot uh, extra virgin olive oil who arrive from Tuscany because uh, it's in, in my memory. But I have also a pilot uh, who respect uh, the beautiful things and the beautiful ingredients. So I love from uh, Lake of Garda, I love from Sicily too. And each part of Italy can give a, a, a new experience. And uh, I'm really proud and happy to be born in this country, but I'm also too curious to discover the other culture. For I do a very great job, I need to respect and represent my country. And I love to share uh, all these uh, beautiful things that we have. I think pride is something he's not missing on the Italian, <laughs> among Italians for sure, but also creativity and style. I know Chef Steve needs to go. So um, Steve, can you jump in this conversation and, and give us your point of view before, and you're allowed to leave anything sure. by the way. Sure, thanks John. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, for me, the challenge is, you know, having a restaurant in uh, Los Angeles that does regionally specific Italian food. Uh, so we have a very bountiful uh, produce produced here in, in California. So obviously I want to take advantage of that, but I'm trying to cook traditional uh, Emil food from Emilia Romagna. Obviously the, the biggest uh, flavor profile on that I'd say is probably uh, Parmigiano Reggiano. Uh, I would never try to replace that with a local product. Uh, we do use a lot, same with all our all, uh, olive oils, all from Italy, uh, Balsamico, all those products that we have are from Italy. We try to stay as local as possible, but uh, I'm never going to try to replace something that's as 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 perfect as Parmigiano Reggiano. Um, I tell my cooks a lot all the time, like the food that we cook is very simple. Uh, we live in a city that's very uh, has a lot of ethnicities and a lot of wonderful uh, ethnic food. A lot of the foods here in LA, uh, like Thai food, Mexican food, they're very flavor forward. They have broad spectrum of of taste profiles, acidity lots of spice, um, you know, so I think the food, your food, uh, I think everybody loves it because it's very familiar, but it doesn't have those kind of wide flavor profiles. So it's really important for us to make sure everything tastes the way it should, because I think it's a, it's a flavor profile that's very umami rich. And um, just, I think it, most everybody loves, loves this type of food, but it has to be seasoned just right. And it's really reliant upon, upon the products that we use. Yeah, that's actually a very good topic because uh, keeping the authenticity of Italian uh, food and cooking is a strong drive from us. But in the same time, pay a tribute to the local market and the local produces, you know, in order to offer something fresh 
and pay respect also to the country that is hosting you. So that's a very thin red line to walk in and the harmony that you're looking for as a chef, I'm sure that harmony as a wine and food payer, uh, harmony and balance are key points in life, work, general okay but also keeping an eye on on what we have in the market here what should we keep italian and, and so forth thank you chef i know we have a couple of questions before that i'd like to move to uh caprio del, Flu del friuli a very charming village in northern east of italy where two iconic wineries are sitting i know that the word iconic and winery often come out during zoom meeting but these are actually i would like to let alessandro say why uh, why his last name is Rotolo and the winery is Chiopetto. Why did you pick Friulano and Pinot Grigio? Give us a breakdown of like, I know you guys are sustainable uh, in a long time. Uh, if you are taking care of the circular economy around your, your winery for decades by now, uh, your heart is open to sustainability, not in the last minute, but it's part of your philosophy. Give us a, a view on the wine and also on the wines you specifically paired with uh, Chef Bartolini recipes. Yeah, thank you Gianmario and thank you for having me in this uh, wonderful chat. For me it's a pleasure before because you are a friend, Rico is a friend. Um, my wineries and especially Schiopetto uh, represent for Friuli Venezia Giulia the history of the winemaking. Um, Mario Schiopetto, the founder of Schiopetto, uh, founded the winery in 1965 and uh, at the same time he put in bottle the Friulano. Uh, Friulano is uh, the iconic wine of Schiopetto and uh, the reason because I put the Friulano with uh, uh, the result of Enrico because Friulano is the signature of Schiopetto as much as uh, the result of Beetroot and Gorgonzola is the signature of uh, Enrico and uh, also because I believe the combination between the acidity and the aromatic part of the Friulano is wonderful paired with uh, uh, the sweet part of the beetroot and the, the, and the gorgonzola. Uh, the Pinot Grigio with its uh, acidity, gorgeous acidity, goes very well uh, with uh, the fried chicken and, and so put a sort of balance between the dish and the wine. Uh, Pinot Grigio then uh, not being uh, an heavy wine is quite uh, nice to be drunk with this uh, kind of food that can be also meant as a finger food during an aperitif or uh, so in an easy way. Uh, then Schiopetto uh, is a winery that cares very much about uh, uh, the environment uh, uh, Mr. Mario started since the beginning to respect the environment. How? Uh, obviously, making wine means uh, producing CO2 in the air. Just the fermentation we are harvesting now, and uh, we have all the doors open because uh, during the fermentation, clearly, we produce CO2. And so, Mario started in 1965, and we do it today. Every time we plant uh, an hectare of vineyard, we buy or we plant an hectare of wood. This uh, to pay our debts with the nature, and this is very important. Since 2012, our winery is completely out from using gas, methane gas, for heating the winery. We put uh, um, a special heater from Austria, we put in the winery, and we built uh, uh, all the vineyard after the pruning. After pruning, we cut all the brushes and we burn. And this way we keep the winery warm during the winter. So and we respect the uh, the nature. Right. And then I want to just say that uh, Mario Schiopetto has been uh, one of the most iconic figure of uh, the Italian enology that uh, at the end of the day has got a short history because uh, the Italian enology as we concept today has got 50 years of history, 50, 55. And Mario Schiopetto has been uh, one of the founding fathers of this concept of this analogy, uh, but for sure the most important figure for the white wine producing in Friuli and in Italy. I, I think I told the story many times, but I remember that black and white photo with about 10, 12 winemakers and only one was making white wine at the time. 
big names of the Italian community, but only one white maker and was Mario Schiopetto. Uh, I also want to say that Alessandro and Enrico are friends and they work together in the restaurant he represents. And uh, I like to see that cooperation going also, um, you know, abroad and, and coming to US. I know we have some questions, so I'm going to come back to the chef in a moment. Since we're talking to Alessandro, I'd like to ask, uh, I know he partially answered to the question, but Krista, um, I'm going to uh, ask to unmute you. Uh, here we go. Would you like to uh, ask your question directly to Alessandro? Sure, Alessandro. Um, I was asking a little bit about the region. I kind of wanted you to maybe paint a picture for us since we can't travel. Um, you know, what is the terroir like? What does it look like geographically? Um, and what makes it so special for the types of wines that you're making there? Yeah, well, Friuli is uh, uh, a gorgeous region. It's located in the northeast of Italy. Uh, so Easter, there is Slovenia. Northern, there is Austria. So it's in the corner. It's uh, an unbelievable region because you have to reckon that from Capriva, an hour I am skiing on the mountains, half an hour I am on the beach. So this is a wonderful thing. And uh, so jealous, so jealous. <laughs> another incredible thing, you have to consider that Friuli Venezia Giulia is on the 46th parallel. And so this means that is one of the best parallel for the producing of wines. Uh, especially Oregon, for white wine. Burgundy, Friuli, some very popular districts. Yeah, you, ha you have to consider that Italy is uh, like this. So not many people know, but Udine, uh, so Friuli is northern than Aosta. Uh, here we produce great uh, wines, uh, great prosciutto also. San Daniele is, in, is the northern part in the world where prosciutto is put under salt uh, and not uh, uh, fumigated, um, but uh, the terroir is great for two reasons. We have uh, a soil that is called ponca, that is uh, a fossil oceanic soil, so very rich of minerals. So when you tasted the wines, for sure, you, you felt a sort of saltiness on your tongue. And uh, Schiopetto is 15 kilometers, so 10 miles far away from the sea. And all the influence of the sea uh, is uh, typical on our wines. And for this reason, there are, those wines are with this nice acidities, very high acidities, and this great texture with this nice sapidity. It's typical. Thank you, Alessandro. And also thank you, Krista, for being part of, of this Zoom. Um, we have a question from uh, Lorena uh, for Chef Bartolini. Chef Bartolini, buonasera. Uh, I enjoyed very much cooking your creations. Um, I would like to know a little bit more about the process. How did, how, how did you come up with this idea of, of marrying, you know, the risotto for the primo and then the, uh, the chicken, fried chicken for the secondo? Well, I chose these two recipes because uh, it was enough simple for a uh, share uh, the technical uh, recipes and also the message who they have. And these two preparations I love because uh, I think uh, these are part of comfort food. When you prepare a, a risotto with a great creaminess, you can manage uh, this creaminess and this risotto, changing the ingredients and it uh, will become uh, a part of your culture and probably tomorrow you can play preparing the uh, same risotto, changing the ingredients. So I love to share uh, this kind of recipe who will give you an opportunity for uh, play in the kitchen yourself. And uh, these two recipe, like uh, I said before, <clears throat> arrived from my uh, career and these are not uh, the same recipes I'm proposing at the restaurants. For that one, I wait you in Milano at the Mudec. I recommend to you, to you visit us. But uh, these are uh, enough uh, interesting for share uh, a, a great message. Thank you. I love them. Grazie. Thank you a lot. Thank and you, Lorena. And other questions, if you, uh, if you want, I can answer about the seeds, the oil. Uh, yes, um, let me do this. La, la, do you, let me see who's asking the question about the seed oil. You can go ahead actually, and then we're gonna unmute the guest and then after this will be Scott. 
Okay, Mr. Scott, uh, thank you for your uh, question. And I recommend uh, an oil who has got uh, a, a great flavor or uh, better if uh, it hasn't got any flavor because uh, the oil need to respect the ingredients who is frying inside and do not be aggressive and do not have a strong flavor who will condition uh, during the, 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 the frying uh, moments, the flavor of the ingredients. For this reason, when I was very young, uh, my family used the olive oil for fried, but it was a, a position of culture because they have only that kind of oil. Then I discovered the seeds oil. At the beginning, my opinion was uh, seeds oil is not the uh, same quality and uh, it's enough true, but the seeds oil can give you the possibility to have a smoke point uh, more high and permit to you to fry it in degrees 170 uh, without any, any dangerous uh, moments who will give you a bad results. So I think it's more simple to use seeds oil for fried, but there are a very different quality of seeds oil on the market. I can say you uh, to recommend uh, pro probably the sunflowers oil, but depends where the sunflowers arrive from and who is the person who select the best sunflowers or made the best oil. Uh, what about grapefruit oil? Sorry? Uh, Grapeseed oil? Grapeseed oil. Yeah. Grapeseed oil? All your... uh, for fried, uh, is, uh, it's good. The smoke point is more high than the sunflowers, but it's also prestigious and probably it's too much for fried. Okay. I love to add uh, the grapes uh, seeds oil uh, for uh, some emulsion or particular sauce where uh, we need the effect who has got uh, who keep the elegance of the flavors without touching any strong uh, details. That's it. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. I think we have uh, Scott. Do you have another question? If not, yeah. I, um, uh, when making the sauce, the ketchup, um, the pear, even though we sli I sliced it very thinly, it was still hard to break down. Yeah. Um, in the sauce and um, the pear need to be very dry. Yeah, you can use also apple. Uh, mm -hmm. Yellow apple is better than the green apple for this recipe. Mm -hmm. But uh, also for these preparations, you can blend the different ingredients and play on yourself, mm -hmm. uh, making a new recipe. You can use, uh, for example, red pepper and do not use a tomato and blend with another fruit. Uh -huh. the, the technical uh, basically is to use a vegetables using a, adding a fructose who arrive from fruit together and the season with the acidity who arrive from vinegar or something similar, sugar, salt, and water. So this basic uh, recipe can give you the opportunity to play with different ingredients and obtain uh, different results. Thank you. It was, it was a lot of fun to do the project. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. We have Eddie now with a question. Before that, Chef, is pan dolce forte typical of Tuscany? What kind of uh, provenience can we tag to the recipe? I found this recipe on a book who was wrote in the uh, 88th century. And they blend uh, the tomatoes and the vinegar with fruits. And it was a surprise to me because uh, in the historic and very old uh, books, we can find very modern recipe inside. And so I was surprised. I tried this recipe, who was uh, really rustic and uh, not elegant. Yeah. And yeah, and I became uh, cr creative in that case, only that case, <laughs> adding the mustard and using a strain for uh, made a, a, an elegant sauce. Mm -hmm. That's so I good. think uh, from uh, kids to adults, we love sweetness and acidity 
pairing between them. It's very simple to be understood from everybody if uh, we speak a very simple uh, language. So sweetness and acidity are uh, probably appreciated from everybody. I think this sauce with fried become popular in every family. We have only to choose the right ingredients who will uh, be part uh, and protagonist of the fried part and sauce. Thank you, Chef. Uh, Eddie Zamora. Hey, Chef, how are you? Uh, how are you? Hi. I was, uh, it was so much fun participating in this. And I, my, my question was regarding the batter. I don't know how humid it is in Milan, um, but here in Los Angeles, it's very dry. And where I live now, it's very smoky. And uh, I almost had to double the amount of water for, for the tempura batter. And I was wondering, is there any technique maybe that you use based on the humidity to, to kind of adjust how, how you make your batter? Or how, you know, how would you suggest we adjust it based on our, you know, based on our humidity? I think the, the flowers need a completely different uh, recipe and quantity of water and liquid uh, in each part of the world where we prepare uh, the tempura butter. That's true. But one thing we can share is uh, the texture when the tempura butter is raw, the texture will be the same. It means uh, we need to touch with our fingers and discover if the recipe is right or not because uh, it's simple in the same place, changing the quality of flowers and the recipe needs a different quantity of ingredients uh, for make uh, the best results. Yeah, I, I think I wanna remind, and also we have two more questions we can answer, Michelle and, and Andre. Um, Chef Sorry, Sling, one thing I can add Prego. is uh, the tempura butter. More is liquid, more it will be thin during uh, the frying moments. Mm -hmm. Cool. Chef Steve operated as a translator basically for the ingredients so we try to be more accurate than possible and also supply for something in season with the characteristic that chef normally use in Milan. Uh, Michelle and then Andre. Hi so the ketchup was a huge hit. Um, we actually ended up um, adding to the recipe because we cooked for uh, grandparents, uh, parents, and, and children. And so we added some homegrown tomatoes from the backyard, but we were really wondering what kind of vinegar do you put into the ketchup and what kind of mustard do you put into the ketchup? Well, uh, the vinegar we are using uh, at the restaurants normally arrive from uh, Barolo area because there are uh, two winemakers who are uh, really specialized in vinegar from grape and I love this. But uh, probably we can change uh, different uh, vinegar and have got uh, a good result. My recipe Yeah, original, we ended up using, uh, using uh, Prosecco. Yeah. Vinegar, which okay. worked out really well. And I will confess that we add a little uh, my pot honey at the yeah. end for a little kick and that was amazing. I never tried before Prosecco vinegar but uh, I will uh, looking for on the market because now I'm curious <laughs> and the mustard uh, that we are using arrived right from Dijon is a French ingredient made from a very important family but exists a different uh, fluid mustard that uh, we, we found out. Uh, there are two different uh, uh, quality of uh, mustard in terms of uh, balsamic and acidity. Uh, one is more sweet and another one was is uh, with a pH more uh, strong. I prefer the strong one. But uh, when we understand the, the direction of the recipe, it's, it will be at the second time we try to prepare uh, the recipe our palate who will give us uh, the right uh, season seasoning that uh, we have to involve in the recipe. Your own twist. 
I like that you open the door for a sort of interpretation. I think I don't yeah, want to call it interpretation, but Andre, we have one more last Especially question. Especially on this uh, online uh, connection. Sure. <laughs> we are not sure. open. It's difficult to, to have a discipline. <laughs> last question, please. Um, well, one was a, a comment I enjoyed very much uh, joining uh, the, um, the competition. I'm a, I'm a from scratcher. I start cooking from scratch. So um, I never bought anything in a box. You know, the meals that you cook uh, arrive pre-portioned. And I said, okay, this is a test, right? And I failed miserably with the chicken. Um, I, think, um, I think it was good. I have a question for the winemaker, if he's still online. Yeah, Ale? Are you there? Yeah. Yeah, we live, I live in California, by the way. So, hey, Eddie, I'll come and see you soon, yeah? Um, we live 50 miles away from the sea as well. We have mountains where we go skiing like an hour away from us. And, uh, you know, I feel like I, I, I'm in the hotter Friuli Venezia Giulia. But the wines of California just don't make it, right? It's a provocation. <laughs> no, I mean, well, uh, why, why are these Californian wines so buttery, so oaky, so strong that, you know, at the first glass, you're like, okay, I don't want to drink this anymore. But me, me, then, you know, uh, Eddie, you might have another opinion. <laughs> well, well fr French, French told me that terroir doesn't mean land or territory. Terroir means the meeting between people and uh, the territory. And so is the interpretation of a territory. Um, the interpretation in uh, California is uh, clearly different uh, between, uh, rather than our interpretation in wines, uh, uh, not just for reasons linked to uh, uh, the land and the climate, but also for the style that the producer wants to give uh, to the wines. And so the two things uh, combined make uh, the difference between the wines. Uh, technically, everything is possible, but uh, every producer obviously gives his own philosophy and then has to handle what it, he can do with uh, uh, the, the land and the climate he has. Very diplomatic. <laughs> I want to add one thing here. <laughs> Uh, I think it's very important what he said, um, the, the style comes also from the human interpretation, definitely altitude, latitude, proximity to the ocean, climate, heat makes a lot of sense, the kind of foliage, so the vegetation around the grapes, but I believe the number one driver is still the market, so what people are expecting, what people want to buy, so the, the, the culture behind the consumption also is a big drive on the winemaking style. And uh, stylistically, if you like something more close to Friuli, buy Friuli, number one. <laughs> number two, um, go up to Willamette Valley and their, their Chardonnay will be more vibrant for you. That uh, being I'm said- I'm a Piemontese, I'm afraid. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> Uh, I can take the red from Piemonte, white, I go to Friuli. Uh, this is a funny conversation, by the way. Um, I, I would love to propose to Jenny to extend to another uh, opportunity, a conversation like this one. Um, Jenny, how do you feel about we need to say goodbye? Ask the chef to name the winner of the contest for the chef table. Yes. Uh, and then, so, Jenny, please, you can conclude and say everybody. Yes, yeah. So, Chef goodbye. Bartolini is going to, he was supposed to pick the winner of a fantastic wine pair dinner for two at his Mudek restaurant in Milano. Three uh, Michelin stars, uh, I'll, I'll remind you. Um, and uh, it's not the trip, it's the dinner, but it's a great excuse to visit Italy and visit with Chef. Uh, so, Chef, um, the floor is yours. Uh, you are the master. You choose the winner today. I'm first of all very happy to be connected with you tonight and for me and today for you. It is very difficult to choose a, from a pix what will be the best preparations, as you know. And I was really shy to upset this uh, initiative because it's very difficult to send uh, in your home my recipes and uh, give you this kind of exams for play alone and then uh, receive uh, my opinion about your preparations. So I think uh, this moment is really embarrassing for me. 
and especially because uh, Gianmario and Jenny asked to me to choose only one of you. And I think uh, next time we need to, to send in Italy more than one person because uh, we need many of you in our restaurants. And Alessandro will be more happy because uh, everybody will drink more. But uh, in this moment, I need to celebrate only one person. And I'm very happy to say that uh, Mr. Eddie Zamora win uh, the dinner at the MUDEC for uh, oh, two shit. reasons. All right. <laughs> Many compliments. <laughs> also for your t-shirt. I love Pink Floyd. That's the Rolling Stones, Stones. but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Well, I will no, definitely only... be going. Yeah. My wife will be very excited. I can't wait to tell her. Well, I think uh, the, risotto, the creaminess of risotto uh, was uh, very similar to the risotto I prepared. Not really the same, but very similar. <laughs> oh, thank you. The aesthetics and the, the colors gave to me a good message from the risotto. And also the crispness uh, that I can see in the pics. I repeat, it's very difficult to uh, judge uh, in this way the recipe. But uh, I think uh, with the pics I had, uh, it was the best. Oh, Many compliments, you. Eddie. And see you soon uh, in Milan. I cannot wait. I've never been. So my, my wife is a fashion designer and she's very excited to, to, to <clears> go to <throat> Milan for the first time. So. And Beautiful. obviously to eat your food and not have to cook it at my house. So it's even it's even better when you cook for us. <laughs> I will cook in Milan. I don't 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 worry. You will be the guest. Oh, I will play I'm honored. with Derito. <laughs> I can't wait. Jenny. Uh, Jamario, they're asking. Uh, uh, Richard is asking to see the winning photo. Let's see if uh, we can retrieve it. Photo. Oh, we want I'm evidence. Going... Yeah. <laughs> how about this? How about this? We're gonna post on the Instagram of the Italian yeah. Chamber of Commerce the photo of um, of the winner, and uh, you guys, please actually uh, come along with this and and uh, promote the event so we can make another one. And like uh, request of Chef Enrico Bartolini, send more people to Milan uh, in the next round. I want to, before I, Jenny, I want to say thank you to everybody. This is a very special moment. We are living very special times. Food is one of the ways to get together and rediscover our, I don't want to use the word soul, but rediscover our identity and our family is extremely important. And Jenny, thank you to you also and the Italian Chamber of Commerce to promote this together. Absolutely. Um, I, I am truly humbled. Um, you know, today's uh, celebration of Italian culinary uh, and winemaking heritage is just, uh, it's been wonderful. Thank you all for uh, welcoming the opportunity to cook uh, independently, but uh, close to Enrico's heart uh, with some of uh, his recipes. Thank you so much for welcoming the authentic Italian table into your homes. We really look forward to more. Uh, stay tuned. I posted in the chat our Instagram. We will be posting the winning photo uh, to celebrate Addie's accomplishment and, uh, and just to keep you updated as to uh, you know, future uh, True Italian Taste events. Thank you, Chef. It was a true honor. We look forward to having you in Los Angeles. Thank you, uh, Lavazza and... Uh, and of course, uh, Alessandro Rotolo and, and Schiopetto Winery, fantastic wines. Lavazza, thank you so much for supporting the event. Uh, we are really grateful. And uh, of course, uh, I wanted to say thank you to two special people who made this possible today. Jamario for moderating uh, uh, so beautifully uh, and uh, for, uh, you know, helping us uh, put this together. And Lisa, um, she's somewhere there. Thank you for coordinating uh, all the media and PR. And uh, final words, thank you to all the staff at Italy America Chamber of Commerce West. Thank you. <laughs>